All right, part three. In the previous video, we talked about the different stages of the writing process. And in this video, I'm gonna focus in specifically on the fourth stage, which is drafting. And you may be wondering, well, why are we starting here and not at the beginning? And basically, it's because you have an assignment due on Thursday um, that's gonna require you to understand um, the drafting part of the writing process. So for many writers, when they think of the act of writing, they actually just focus in on the drafting part and they don't necessarily consider these first uh, three parts um, because this is the part of the writing process where you're actually putting you know, your fingers on the keyboard or pen to paper to generate what we call writing. Now, going with that, this is often the step that many writers find to be the hardest is just starting writing. And what I would like you to do is uh, use some of the ideas given in Chapter 17 under the Making a Start Enjoyable to help you start and continue the writing uh, process. Now, to go with uh, drafting, uh, having the right writing environment and habits can also make drafting easier. And we'll go over this more uh, when we get to chapter 15, strategies for generating ideas. Now in 17, chapter 17, uh, they basically introduce you to three types of paragraphs real quickly and they focus a bit more really on what are called body paragraphs. Now what I want you to realize is that in every essay, you are going to have um, these three types of paragraphs, opening, body paragraphs, and uh, conclusions. And there's certain criteria that each paragraph must have in it. So for an opening paragraph, you must have an interesting hook, something that grabs the reader's attention and makes them wanna keep reading. You also need to introduce the reader to your essay's topic, basically the main idea and the purpose for why you're writing. What information do you wanna to convey to the reader and what do you want them to learn uh, about or from you after reading the essay. And then you need to contain a thesis sentence. And ideally, a good thesis sentence will kind of give the reader the answer to these points that I made uh, right in the second point. Now, the body paragraphs, their function is to build off of what you said in this opening paragraph. And there are some similar features. So one, a body paragraph will have a topic sentence that states the main idea of that paragraph, okay? And then you will have support that basically explains this uh, main idea a little bit more. So this is where you would give facts, examples, quotes um, that will support really the thesis of your paper. And then at the end of a body paragraph, and this can sound a little weird to some, you'll have a conclusion sentence that interprets and explains the evidence that you just gave in that body paragraph. And ultimately, you'll kind of explain too, how does all of this evidence relate back up to the thesis sentence of your paper, i.e. the main purpose for you writing it. And then lastly, for the conclusion paragraph, this is the last paragraph in your essay. And this is where you kind of restate and summarize your paper in different words and the purpose you have in writing it. And it's also where you kind of emphasize to your reader what can be called the takeaway value for your essay. This is what do you want your writer to think, feel, or do after reading your essay. Now here on the screen, I've kind of given you the generic five paragraph um, template that you probably learned in high school where you have your introduction, three body paragraphs, and your conclusion paragraph. Um, there's no hard fast rule that says you have to keep with this, but generally you will usually have three body paragraphs, but sometimes you might have two. If it's a really long essay, like five, six pages, of course you're going to have many, many more body paragraphs than just three. So realize that you can kind of break this, but you always need to have an opening paragraph and a closing paragraph and then body paragraphs in the middle of your paper. All right, so uh, what you're doing on Thursday is the paragraph analysis exercise on um, a short little essay hey, in our Bedford textbook called Returning to My Father's uh, Koreatown. All right, so you're going to read this essay and complete this assignment. Now for every assignment you do in college, it's good to ask these four questions. What is the purpose of the assignment? And that basically means, what does my instructor want me to learn by doing this assignment? What is the learning goal or objective? And then to, to identify for yourself, what are you being asked to do? So for this assignment, you're basically going to be asked to analyze the paragraph structure that uh, Re uses in her essay, Returning to My Father's Koreatown. Okay, I want you to identify the topic sentences, 
the opening paragraph and the conclusion and to analyze them based upon what you learned in chapter 17. All right, so what questions does this assignment want you to address? And um, I'll point out those, there's, uh, there's a few in the document, I'll point those out in a second. And then basically, where are you uncertain? So is there any part of this assignment that you don't know how to do or what's being asked? And then this is where you should reach out and contact me and I'll help you. So you can find the assignment instructions on page eight in the syllabus. And I'm also going to show you uh, where to locate the document that you will use. So for some of the exercises in this course, you're gonna have a, a template to kind of fill out. So under week one for this week, I go down and I see the paperclip icon says paragraph analysis exercise template. And this is what the document looks like. It gives you some more directions to walk you through, but you can see it's asking you some specific questions such as to identify the topic sentence, you know, in paragraph two and such. So you will fill this out and you will submit it uh, right back on MU Learn. And basically you would go to the link right under that document template where there's a little paper and pencil icon and click on this. And um, it will give you the steps to upload the document. So what you would do is hit Start Assignment, choose the uh, file from your computer where you uh, downloaded that template earlier, oh, which is maybe what I should have said. So here's the template, here's the download, make sure and click that and then allow you to save it to your computer and for you to edit it. And then you would resubmit it up here by Choose File and then click Submit Assignment. This is very important. If you don't click this uh, green button here, nothing happens. It doesn't get turned in, all right? And I don't see that you have your submission. So it's also helpful too, as you're submitting, to review the rubric and make sure that you've met all the criteria of the assignment um, to make sure that you'll get a good grade on it. All right, so that's really um, most of what I'm saying in this video. I've kind of shown you how to do it. So what you'll do right now is go ahead, go read, return to my father's Koreatown, complete the paragraph exercise, and then go ahead and move on to part four.